Last week we talked about the biblical definition of disciple. What is a disciple? How do you know what a disciple is? Well, we, we looked to the scripture for our definition of disciple and we saw from Matthew 4.19 that what Jesus said a disciple of his was, was he said, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. So a disciple is someone who, who follows Jesus, who submits to the lordship of Jesus, who makes Jesus their boss. And then it said, follow me and I will make you a disciple is someone who is, who is transformed and changed and wants to be changed into the image of Jesus and the likeness of Jesus. And then follow me and I will make you fishers of men. A, a disciple is someone who makes disciples of others. A number of years ago, there was a fellow that I got to know who was really going through some real difficulties in his life. And I, I didn't know if he was a, uh, an unbeliever or a believer. He professed to be a believer, but I, I really couldn't see any evidence of, of fruit in his life. And his life was really a, a mess. His family life was, was really a mess. Well, I developed a relationship with him and started trying to reveal to him the the gospel of Jesus Christ and the plan that God has for his life. And, and so we began to develop this relationship and then his family began to fall apart. And one day I came home from church and he was sitting inside my living room waiting on me to get home. And his wife had left him and he said to me, I'm going to take my own life. I'm going to commit suicide. Well, I don't know if you've ever had anybody say that to you before, but you're scrambling for words to try to give them some kind of hope or try to deter them from taking their own life. And so we talked for a little while and, and finally he, he got up and he said he'd think about the things that I said and, and he left. Well, it was a few days later, I was driving toward my house and there's this big field out close to my house and I looked out in that field and I saw this fellow's pickup truck sitting in the field. Well, I pulled up behind his pickup and he was he was sitting in the front seat. I had a little bit of apprehension about, well, what's going on here? He's sitting in his pickup in the middle of a field that's not even on a road. You know, what's 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 happening here? And I thought about what he said to me that he was going to take his own life. And so I I hit my horn just to see if he would move or, you know, get his attention and he didn't even move. And so finally I, I, I got out of my car and I walked up beside him and his truck and I looked inside the window and, and he was sitting there like a statue, just as stiff as he could be. And I looked to his, in his hand and there was a gun and uh, I tapped on the window and uh, he rolled down the window and he told me, that he had been sitting there for a number of hours and trying to get up the courage to take his life. He had also medicated himself because he felt like, well, that will make it less painful if I medicate myself. And he had this weird music going and he'd written his suicide notes and they were all sitting there in the seat beside him. Well, I didn't know what to say. And so I just began to pray and ask God what I should say to him. And finally, what I said to him, it really as I've looked back on it was, was didn't make a lot of sense because here he was, he was in a, in a state of hopelessness. His, his family had left him. He, he had professed faith in Christ when he was much younger, but he, there was no fruit in his life to show that he had, he was a real follower of Jesus. And so I don't know, it had to be the Lord that I would say this to him. And I, I said to him, you know, the reason that you're still alive is that the Lord has one more person that he wants you to reach. And if you take your life, you're not going to be able to fulfill that purpose and plan that God has for your life. He looked at me, and for the first time, it was like I could see sanity in his eyes. And he, and he calmly took that gun, and he handed that gun to me. Well... That fellow ended up coming into our church and 
developing relationship with others and he was discipled by others, continued to be discipled by me and and he's still walking with the Lord and still trying to reach that last one to this day. God changed his life out of that. Well, when you think about that story and what happened, I want you to think about our, our definition of disciple. A, a disciple of Jesus is one who's committed to follow Jesus, follow me, make him the Lord of our life. And then a disciple of Jesus is one who wants to be changed into the likeness and image of Jesus. But a disciple of Jesus is one who makes disciples for Jesus. You know, if I would have told that fellow, you know, you can't take your own life. I mean, if you do, uh, then you're, you're breaking the commands of God and Jesus is not the Lord of your life. I could have said, you know, you're not following Jesus if you take your life. And I don't think that would have meant anything to him. I could have said, you know, uh, you know, the Lord's purpose for all this adversity that you're going through is to transform you into his image. Uh, I don't think that would have made a whole lot of sense to him either. And I don't think that would have got him to hand me that gun that day. In fact, he may have thought, you know, if I'm a believer, I might as well just go ahead and end it now and I'll be transformed into his image right away. But I said to him. The Lord has one more person that he wants you to reach. And that's why you exist. That's why you're still alive. And if you take your own life, you're not going to fulfill that purpose and plan for your life. That's what caused him to hand me the gun. You know, when I thought about that, why? Why would that accomplish that? Why would he decide at that moment? Oh, there's hope for me. You know, when you are born, God has a purpose for your life. And whether you know it or not, your purpose is to glorify God. But the best way that you glorify God is by becoming a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. But once you become a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, your great purpose in life is to make disciples for Jesus Christ. And that's the reason you exist. That's the reason that you're alive is to make disciples for Jesus Christ. That's why you're having a mission team meeting tonight. Oh, you'll enjoy fellowship with one another. Oh, you'll care for each other. But the primary reason that we meet in small groups and, and in mission teams is to make disciples for Jesus Christ. It's God's purpose for you. For you to be a participant. For you to be making disciples one person at a time.